now and then a PowerPoint counterargument against Jeff Dunham's comedy on immigration. Before we can delve into Jeff Dunham's work, we must first understand modern and past examples of American immigration. In this PowerPoint, we'll be looking at immigration in the early 1900s and immigration in the modern day. With the huge economic success following the end of World War I, and the American public's focus being drawn to the affairs in Europe, large amounts of workers, mostly from Asia and Europe, flooded to the United States seeking work and refuge. And granted, the United States immigration system of that time was ill-equipped to handle large amounts of immigrants. The large amounts of casualties sustained in World War I produced a great need for large amounts of unskilled work. This could easily be fulfilled by these new immigrants that had come to the U.S. Regardless of the situation, it was still seen as a problem. The situation we deal with in America is very different from that of the past. America is currently experiencing an economic depression, which is leading to a lack of focus and unity, as well as foreign war in the Middle East. Mostly the immigrants we're dealing with are from Mexico and Syria, compared to Asia and Europe. Not to mention globalization and computers, as well as outsourcing, are making unskilled workers obsolete in the United States. And regardless, people have not changed and it's still considered a problem. On this slide you can see the rising tension in the immigration problem of the past and of today. As we go along we see these stepping stones of rising tension that eventually boil over in these anti-immigration doctrines. And these changes always lead to debate and shifts in American foreign policy. So whether it be the future or the past, these problems are very similar. America is a country founded on not turning others away based on their race, religion, gender, or creed. So, an act that turns away people based on their race, religion, gender, or creed is in essence against the very thing our nation was founded on. No matter how hard we try to sweep it under the rug, in the end, history will remember. Donald Trump, the current president, won in an almost 50-50 split election against former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. His iconic build-a-wall solution for illegal immigration and promises to changes of current United States foreign affairs and to make America great again. Comedian Jeff Dunham, most famous for his unique blend of stand-up comedy and ventriloquism, found his place in the spotlight among the 2016 election as well. Some of his most famous videos are satirical skits that are based around the 2016 American presidential election and the policies of winning candidate Donald Trump. Well, most of his works on the 2016 election are criticisms parodying Donald Trump's campaign, but little of his work talks of Hillary Clinton. In Jeff Dunham's stand-up skit, Politically Unbalanced, he and his puppet Walter, he and his puppet Walter crack a few jokes about Donald Trump's attitude towards Mexican culture, saying that if Donald Trump becomes president, he'll rename Cinco de Mayo to May 5th. Throughout his skits, most of his jokes are made to focus on the idea of Donald Trump being a scandalous anti-Mexican, and the jokes made about Hillary Clinton are more focused about her outward appearance. Granted that Jeff expresses through his skits criticism of Donald Trump's campaign and its policies on foreign affairs, he never poses a solution or states the opposite of it as ideal. In fact, it's this leniency and openness to interpretation that allows him to reach a wide audience as a comedian. To not impose his ideas, but simply to state them, then let the audience interpret what they mean.
If you need to find your weakness, ask your enemy. I suggest we take a word from Mr. Putin and come to a compromise. But let us not repeat the same mistakes of the past. We must use the one thing the past does not have, technology of today. Computers handle airplanes, bikes, cars, trains. It organizes people, recognizes voices and faces in crowds. It organizes police. It manages banks. The power of computers is truly all over the world. We cannot look into our pockets, at our homes. We cannot even sleep without a computer being near us. We do not live in a concrete jungle anymore. We live in a cyber one. Computers are capable of cataloging, recognizing, and reorganizing data. They could assign patterns, behaviors, certain sounds to those human catalogs, keeping them on file simply by observing them. In theory, this combined with a human partner could be more than enough to set up a simple system that would be cheap and effective for legal immigrants to become legal.